minus 5 and plus 2, right? And then clearly x is equals to 5 or x is equals to minus 2. That is 1.1.1, pretty much straightforward. So let's take a look at 1.1.2. We have 3x squared plus 6x plus 1 being equals to 0. And we're supposed to solve for x correct to two decimal places. If you like this video, you will definitely love my course. Go ahead and click the link on my bio and you will land on this page. You will not only find the past exam questions, but introduction videos where I break down complex concepts into small pieces that are easy to digest. It is very important in grade 12 to stay ahead of your teacher. And this is what this course is for. It's very easy to navigate through the course as videos are arranged into collections. You can clearly see that we have electrostatics, work energy and power, Doppler effect, so on and so on. Do you maybe need help with study tips and creating your own timetable? We can talk about that inside the course and I can help you out. It doesn't even take a minute to join. Can't wait to hear from you. This is another easy one. Sticking to the basics, we're just using the quadratic equation, the quadratic formula. So we are going to say that x is equals to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Everything divided by 2a. So a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant. So we're going to have x being equals to minus 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared so that is going to be 6 squared minus 4 ac a is 3 and c is 1 and we divide all that by 2a so divided by 2 multiplied by 3 so x is equals to so now i need to put that in my calculator and when I do that, I get x is equals to minus 1.82 or x is equals to minus 0 0.18. So there we go, 1.1.2. Let's take a look at 1.1.3. We have 2 to the power x plus 4 plus 2 to the power x when equals to 8704 okay so what can we possibly do here let's start by saying that 2x to the plus 4 is just equals to 2 to the power x multiplied by 2 to the power 4 plus 2 to the power x this is equals to 8704 so what is 2 to the power 4 2 to the power 4 is 16 so we have 16 multiplied by 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power x being equals to 8704. So we can let k be equals to 2x, or we can just take 2x as a common factor without necessarily having to let k be equals to 2x. If you let k be equals to 2x, there's still no problem. So we are going to have 2x multiplied by 16 plus 1 being equals to 8000. 704. So 16 plus 1 is 17. So 8704 divided by 17. That is 512. So 2 to the power x is equal to 512. So 2 to the power x is equal to. So there must be a way of writing 500 to the power 12 with a base of 2. So 2 to the power 5 is 32. 2 to the power 8 is 256. 2 to the power 9 is 512. So 2 to the power 9 is 512. So x is equals to 9. There we go. We have solved 1.1.3. So that's one of the ways we can answer this question. You can obviously let 2x be equals to k. No problem whatsoever. Right. And then 1.1.4. x minus 8 multiplied by x plus 2 is less or equals to 0. So first and foremost, I want to find my critical values, right? So I'm making that statement so I can change the 
inequality sign into an equal sign, right? After I state that CV critical values, I can then do that. So clearly here, x is equals to 8 or x is equals to minus 2. So if you've been watching the channel, you know fully well that when we get to this point, there's only two possible sets of solutions. It's either x lies between these two numbers in what fashion in the following way. x lies between minus 2 and 8. Or the other second option, x is less than minus 2 or x is greater than 8. These are always the two possible sets of solutions that we have. So we need to test the first and see if it satisfies our inequality. If it does, this is our answer. If it does not, this is our answer. So how do we do that? Let's take a number between minus 2 and 8. We can take 0 because it will make our life simple. So if we take 0, we're going to have 0 minus 8 multiplied by 0 plus 2. When you press equal sign, you get minus 16. So minus 16 less or equals to 0. Is this true? Is minus 16 less or equals to 0? Yes, it is. It is less than. So th that means that this is our actual solution, right? And not this second option, right? So we crush out the second option and the first option is our solution as we have clearly demonstrated 1.1.4. What about 1.1.5? Let's take a look. We have x plus 3 multiplied by the square root of x plus 2 being equals to 2. Right, so I have this square root. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is squaring both sides. But if I square both sides well, I mean x on the left hand side, I'm going to come across a few issues. Issues we can come across, but let's not. So 3 multiplied by x plus 2 is equal to x, well, not x minus 2, but 2 minus x. Way much better. This is way much better. Right. So now we can go ahead and square both sides, right? Uh, when we do that, we're going to get 9. I mean, 3 squared is 9. And then here we're going to have x plus 2 because we have gotten rid of the square root by squaring. And then 2 minus x, uh, when we square that, we get 4 minus 4x plus x squared. Right, so this is going to be 9x plus 18 being equal to 4 minus 4x plus x squared. Right, so we're going to have x squared uh, minus 4x minus 9x. So that is just minus 4 minus 9. So I get minus 13x and then 4 minus 18 minus 40 minus 14. This is equal to 0. So right, x, x, this is equal to 0. Two numbers of which when I multiply, I get minus 14. And when I add them, I get, I get what? When I add them, I get, this is 1.1.5, yes. Uh, when I add them, I get minus 13. Obviously, that is minus 14 and plus 1. So x is equal to 14 or x is equal to minus 1. Usually, when you square, we introduce solutions that are not necessarily true. So we need to go substitute 14 into the original equation and substitute minus 1 as well and see which answer actually gives us 2. So when I substitute 14, I get 14 plus 3 multiplied by 14 plus 2. It gives me 26. So when I substitute 14, I get 26. So 14 cannot be an answer. Let's just test out minus 1. So minus 1 plus 3 multiplied by the square root of minus 1 plus 2 is equal to 2. So x is equal to minus 1 satisfies our equation. So there we go. 1.1.5. Let's do 1.2 and 1.3 on a separate video.